up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Heard That, your weekly sports update here on GoBuffsGo.com for the WT Sports Network. I'm your host, Zach Barnes. West Texas A&M football getting their first win of the season as they went up to Colorado State Pueblo and ended up winning that one 26-10, where the defense shined once again with three picks in that game. You know, there was a couple plays in there. You know, you get a punt blocked and an extra point blocked, you know, you're not real happy about. But I thought our kickoff cover team rallied and did a good job. I thought Connor kicked the ball really well. Uh, I thought we tackled well. I thought we were getting 11 hats to the ball. And we talked about that all week was we were going to have to get 11 hats to the ball and be real physical at the point of attack. And then offensively, I thought we handled the game plan really well. Uh, the check progression and some things that we did with Ethan and the receivers and the running backs, I thought they did a really good job. And I thought we saw our offensive line kind of grow up a little bit and get used to it. Those five guys really running the ball well and working together. Well, I think the defense is really excited. I think the defense has played, you know, really, you don't want to jinx them or anything, but eight really good solid quarters for the most part. You know, I think they put a good two weeks together, good game plans, and I think Coach Rock and those guys have done a great job. But what you're really seeing is a group of guys that are hustling, flying around, that are enjoying playing too. You know, they're laughing and smiling and enjoying working hard. And so once you get that going, it's, a, it's an easy thing to keep building on. That win for the Buffs gave the Thunderwolves their first 0-2 start since the reinstatement of that football program, and it also shut down a 29-game winning streak at home in the regular season. Up next for the Buffs, they'll head down to iconic Ratliff Stadium down in Odessa, and they will take on the Falcons of UT Permian Basin. Well, they're talking, you know, a sellout. You know, they're looking anywhere from 14 to 18, you know, coming from Kit, and so I mean, we're expecting a big crowd and. A you know, being on national television and the whole thing. It's going to be a neat deal on ESPN3. And so our guys are excited about it. And I think that's one thing, um, you know, the last eight years that I've been here, our team has never shied away from traveling on the road. They kind of like playing on the road and they like playing on a big stage. And so hopefully it kind of gets them fired up and, and can kind of keep building on it. They're playing really well. You know, they're scoring some points. They're playing good defensively. Um, and they're real sound defensively. They're not making a lot of mistakes. They're right where they need to be. Um, good effort plays. Their quarterback play is really good right now, and so um, it's one of those things. You know, they're 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 scholarship guys. I mean, they're a scholarship football team. Uh, even though they're young or any of that stuff, they're still there. They got recruited there. They want to win and they want to be successful, and so they're going to be really excited to play. This game will be both teams' Lone Star Conference opener and UT Permian Basin's first ever conference opener. That game can be seen on ESPN3 as well as you can hear it on 98.7, Jack FM, as well as live stats on GoBuffsGo.com. Buffalo soccer with two home games through the past week. First off, they had a Friday home game against Houston Tillotson. They ended up with a 6-1 victory over the Rams. Then on Sunday, the Buffs pitching a 3-0 shutout over the Thunderwolves of Colorado State Pueblo. To be 3-1 at this point is, is very positive and very happy with the, the progress of our team that we're making. Um, you know, uh, Friday was a little bit of a trap game uh, in terms of just, you know, kind of an unknown opponent, never played him before. Um, you know, we, we played fairly well, scored some goals, um, gave up a, a really soft one that, you know, didn't make us very happy because we're working really hard trying not to concede on the, the cheapies and stuff like that, you know. And then on Saturday, on Sunday, you know, we played uh, Colorado State Pueblo, which has traditionally been a pretty good team. and. I uh, was really happy with the way we started coming out fast and aggressive and scored, I think we scored three goals in about 15 minutes and we kind of hoped, you know, they locked that thing down early. And because of that, it was able for us to, to play some, some wrestling kids and play some other kids in some different spots to try to, you know, see how they would fit in and, 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 and still maintain the, the goose egg on, on the defensive side. So really, really happy with that. Up next for the Buffs, they'll hit a road trip on the 15th and 17th. First, they'll see a rival in Midwestern State in the conference opener. First time the Buffs have seen a conference game since 2012. And right after that, on the 17th, the Buffs will see Oklahoma Christian University. Played very well last year down there with a very young squad. Um, you know, lost in double overtime. And so we're we're excited about, first of all, we're excited about being in the conference. We're excited about going. Um, there's nothing that intimidates us about going there. Our kids are, you know, we have a very mature group of players. Um, we're very healthy, so um, we're excited about getting this thing rolling, and we're excited about playing Midwestern, and uh, I feel really, really good about our chances down there. The game against Midwestern will start at 7 p.m., and the game against Oklahoma Christian will start at 1. Of course, you can catch live stats of those games on GoBuffsGo.com. Lady Buff Soccer only saw one game last week where they hosted New Mexico Highlands University on Thursday night, and they ended up winning that one 3-1. 
That win gives the Lady Buffs their first win on the season and moving the record to 1-2. Up next for the Lady Buffs, they'll see a road trip on the 15th as they will take on Southwestern Oklahoma State. And then the Lady Buffs will host a home game on Saturday against Southern Nazarene. Start time for that game is set for 3 o'clock Central Time and of course you can see live streaming and live stats of that game on Go Buffs Go. So last weekend Lady Buff Volleyball took a trip up to Indianapolis for the UND Invitational where they ended up splitting the weekend 2-2 two two, bringing their overall season to 4-4. Four four. First started off with a game against North Alabama where they ended up losing that one 0-3 and then they ended up dropping the Ashland match one set to three. Lady Buffs then responded on Saturday getting two wins against Lock Haven with a 3-0 set sweep and then spoiling the host with a 3-1 set win. The, the thing is, is what we're learning is, is um, you know, we have six girls on the court and like I told them, like we seem to be winning with three. So we got to get some positions to rise up. It's not like they're trying, it's just we need a little bit more time. But yeah, there's a lot of promise after this week. And so the, the positive was is we played in a very intense environment, almost like Tarleton, but people hanging on top of you. And so uh, we need to ride with that. The thing is with Cameron is their coach is very good about just defense. You think they're out of it and they're not. And then Midwestern is very offensive. They run very fast. And so um, they're you know two different, very well two different built teams. Um, but a lot of momentum, yeah, just because we had a we just had fun this weekend. Lady Buffs will now enter conference play as they will start off on the road. First, they'll see the Aggies of Cameron, and following that, they'll head down to Wichita Falls and take on the Mustangs of Midwestern State. Women's Cross Country will head to Joplin, Missouri on the 17th for the MSSU Southern Stampede. Down in Joplin, the Lady Buffs will see a lot of tough competition, including many schools within the region. Uh, we're real excited about going to Missouri. It's going to be, uh, our first race was 4K, so moving up to 5K. It's historically a very um, high profile meet, a lot of competition, competition, big race. Um, it's held the national meet multiple times. We raced there at nationals in 2012, and the guys did last year as well. So it's a fantastic place and a great competition. So we will be uh, running into people uh, in our conference as well as our region. So I think it'll really give the girls an opportunity to see where they are. Hopefully, over the last couple of weeks, we've really set them up uh, in training to be successful. After that, the Lady Buffs will get a few weeks off as their next competition will be October 1st at the MSU Denver Invitational. WT Men's Golf in its first competition of the year, where in day one, Buffs ended up with a sixth place finish after the first two rounds. Braden Cruz for the Buffs with the best score so far after the first two rounds with a score of 143. The Ryan Palmer Invitational will conclude today with one more round that started this morning. And for final results, you can see those on GoBuffsGo.com. Folks, thank you for joining us this week on Heard That. Folks, be sure to keep up on GoBuffsGo.com for live stats, streaming, and updates for all of your favorite sports. For the WG Sports Network, I'm Zach Barnes. We'll see you next week.